Yeah. So what we've got here is we've got a big uh, a big tub of water boiling away. Okay. And we can introduce uh, rye. Now rye is quite a nice uh, grain to work with. Okay. Um, the reason is is that the the grain itself, when you cook it, it doesn't turn into mush. Okay. It still holds water. It holds its shape. Okay. Because later on, what we want to do is be able to knock this uh, this mycelium and then it pour that out into something else, into right. your straw or into yeah. your other substrate. So we want something that doesn't kind of fall to bits and go into like a paste. Yeah. We want something that stays, stays that the mycelium itself can can get um, grow into the inside of that uh, that grain. Yeah. It can get a home inside there. So yeah. that when we knock it around, we don't destroy the mycelium, all we're doing is we're just shaking it up and then we can pour it out. Great. And then from that centre, it'll creep out and then start colonising the substrate that we create. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. So, now what we're going to do is uh, measure this out. Um, basically, you want about half, half um, whatever size jar you're going to be using. Now, we've got a relatively small uh, pressure cooker. Um, so, of course, depending on the size of your pressure cooker, Will depend on how many jars we can fit in there. Sure. Okay. So that will calculate how much time you're going to spend because yeah. this needs to cook about 45 minutes at pressure. Um, so first off, it's got to get to pressure and then cook for 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to fill this approximately half half the jar. We're going to put that into the pot and uh, pasteurize away. Pasteurize away. I'll try take out anything that. Uh, Bits of straw. Bits of straw if there is any in there. So we've got about 15 jars, so we're going to do about 15 of these. Oh, I see. Okay, so before we uh, empty the, the rye out of the, the pot, what we've got to do is uh, basically we need to, um, while the rye is very hot, we need to sieve the rye so we get, we evaporate some of the water so the grain is very dry when we put it into the jars. So um, this sieve, as you can see, is very small. So Dave is uh, constructing us a sieve using some metal mesh and uh, we've just lined this plastic crate and uh, we're just going to add this to the side so that when we add the grain we can do a lot of it at the same time. And you'd like this to be so let's uh, fine, right? Yeah, it needs to be just fine enough to keep the material. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good to go. Great. Right, so now our rye is cooked, as you can see. Um, what we're looking for in this rye is it needs to be um, relatively soft on the inside but still nice and uh, soft firm on the outside okay so once you've got your rye that so how way, long was that boiling for this is uh, this all this rye was cooked for about 45 minutes okay so now we're going to add the rye into here as you can see there's still quite a lot of moisture um, on this uh, rye so what we want is uh, what we call the the kitchen cloth uh, test so when we take this rye out of here, we place it on a kitchen cloth and we fold the kitchen cloth over, um, there shouldn't be any water on it. So what we want to do now is just keep flicking the rye. So you can see the steam is bubbling off the, the rye. If our uh, sieve is working. And you can see the steam is, uh, is dissipating. And we keep on doing this until all the steam has uh, evaporated. Okay. Have you got any... Um, my, uh, Jamie Oliver impersonation, when he... Uh, put a, put a splash of olive oil on it, man. <laughs> 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 
Do you have any uh, kitchen towel? Paper uh, and kitchen towel? I have toilet paper. That'll do. Mm -hmm. Toilet paper. Just a couple of pieces, yeah. just switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now we've been flicking the uh, the rag, getting off some steam. We're going to give it the the paper towel test. So we're going to take some some rag. We're going to put it on paper towel. Close it. What we want to make sure is that when it comes out, there's no moisture on the towel. So as you can see, there's no wetness there. Okay. So that's that's about ready. Okay. So now let's let's put that into the jars. Okay. So now we're ready with the rye. The rye is already cooked. It's uh, we've dried it. We're now going to transport that rye into the the jar. Now, we're going to fill the jar, as I said before, depending on the size of your pressure cooker, will depend on the size of your jars you're going to do. Our pressure cooker holds about eight of these uh, 750 milliliter uh, jars. So we're going to fill these three quarters because we want to add some, myce some mycelium to these. So we're going to fill them up to three quarters and then put the, the cap on, okay? this with uh, some uh, some filter material and then we'll put uh, some uh, foil over the top of this and we'll transport that into the pressure cooker but we'll show you that in a little bit later. So, the next day is once we've got all the jars uh, filled, we're going to place a little hole in the, the jar. This is going to act as, uh, we're going to plug this with some filter material. Um, this filter material basically will allow the, the, the steam and the heat to get into the jars. And then um, as the jars cool down, it'll the air inside will get smaller and suck in air from the outside. So this will prevent any contaminations from being drawn back into the jar. So this is our next stage. If you try it without, you'll get lots of metal barbs on the other side of the lid. Okay. Um, so if by drilling, by placing a piece of wood underneath the, the lid, uh, as you drill through, uh, you cut the, the wood, the metal cleanly, so mm -hmm. you don't get as so many barbs. Right, so this is um, uh, poly uh, fiber fill. Fi fi fiber fiber fill is polyester uh, fibers. Find them in any any cushion. You can't find them as a raw material. You can just buy a cheap uh, cushion and uh, extract them from here. The, why is this good? Why is it good? Um, it doesn't melt in the temperatures that we have inside the, the pressure cooker. Um, it acts as a, as a filtration system um, and it's, uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, you can re use it over and over again, so you don't have to throw it away. It can be reused. So the idea behind this, this material is we basically want to um, put enough inside this, um, the hole that we've created. You'll see that some of these holes are, are tiny. But I find that if you just push it enough through, 
Uh, the rest should follow. Okay, so you get a scenario of this. So you've got some fluff on the top, some at the bottom, and that is basically creating a uh, filter so that when the jars cool and they draw in air from the outside, that uh, that's going to filter our air to stop any contaminants getting in there. Okay, so we can pop that on top there. And then we cover them with foil and we put them in the pressure cooker. The reason we cover them in foil is as the uh, process comes to the end inside the pressure cooker, water will condense at the top of the pressure cooker and drip down. Mm -hmm. So we don't want the water getting into the jars. So the foil just acts like a, a sure. cap that you, you can put it. Again, be careful when you take off the foil because you can use them again and again. Okay, so again, you're not wasting materials. Okay, great. Let's do that. You want it to be tight, you don't want it to be loose. Because if it's uh, if it's loose then the uh, contaminants will get through as well. a little bit wider than a, a jar mm -hmm. okay and if your foil is long enough you can fold it in half so if we put it a little bit wider than a jar okay. fold that in half okay. and then we place that over the jar like so okay and that will basically allow the steam to get in, but it won't allow any water to drop down from the top of the pressure cooker while it's cooking. Put something over the elements just so the jars don't sit directly on the elements or else they've got a good chance of uh, cracking. Um, in this uh, pressure cooker we can fit um, eight jars, so we load them in. Did you put a piece of foil over the element? Uh, we put a stone in the bottom, just to... So how long are they going to cook for? Uh, about an hour. By the time it heats up it will be about 45 minutes of pressure. Okay, what what pressure you put some water in now. Now we've already put water in. Okay, so um, one of the things you've got to be careful of if you're working with pressure cookers, um, they get up to a very high, high pressure inside. Um, and when you put these on, you've got the valves on the top. These are safety valves to release the pressure. So when you've got your jar stacked in like this, you want to make sure these aren't being blocked up by the uh, by the foil. And to do that is basically when you when it first starts, as the pressure starts to build, just lift the weight on the top of the pressure cooker. And you should hear the steam come out of them. And if you do, then you're okay. Okay. So now these uh, the jars that we saw earlier have been in the pressure cooker for one hour um, at uh, 15 psi. 
So I've already released the pressure from here, so we should be able to pop this open. And here inside, we have very nice hot steamy jars. Okay, so now we're going to lift these jars out, let them cool, and uh, keep on stocking this uh, machine up until we finished everything.